something beautiful is on its way to you. This is the experience of a lifetime, my dear friend. You want to give yourself this at all costs to your ego, your pride, and your fears. Love, it's everywhere. It's beautiful, it lives within, it doesn't need to be created. It is already there for you. We've hiked down three canyons and here we are. Let's shoot it, baby. I feel the funky chicken, the funky messiah. Yeah! Search for yourself on your own. Go within yourself. Find it within your breath, within your very spirit. Mrs. Nixon is done. Now I want to do a little magic trick. A spiritual path brings us to a place in our life where we discover the diamond and we learn how to pull it out of the mud. It's all very interesting. So we come to that very sacred place in our series where I'm going to ask you, what's the point of it all for you? What's the point of your life? Why are you even here? What good are you? <laughs> well, some people would sit there and go, well, I'm good because I got a family and I got people who love me and I've got kids to raise. Whoa, 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 whoa. Animals do that. Donkeys do that. Horses do. Whoa, whoa. What is the point of it all? Think about your life for a moment. If you follow your body and your mind, you have a very small world. I want you to consider the smallness of your world. The body wants very few things. It wants to sleep, of course, loves to eat, but when it eats or drinks, it has to pee and it has to poop. And then it wants uh, sex, probably. And then it wants to sleep again. And it wants to eat again. Then it has to pee and poop again. And then it has to, do you understand what I'm saying? It's a pretty small life. So what do we do to try to make it exciting? Well, we try to have more maybe elegant places to pee and poop, or we have a more elegant food, or we have a nicer place to sleep, and we call that a life. What a life. And the more we have of that, the more we think we're important. I mean, who do you consider to be more important? The guy who sleeps under the bridge or the one who sleeps in a gigantic, beautiful house and has the luxurious toilet and the luxurious bath and the luxurious bed? Who do you honor more? Think about it. What's the point of it all? What's the meaning of our life? Is it contained in the things we own and have and where we pee and poop and where we sleep and how we eat, where we uh, rest? What is it all about? Well, if you start to look at your life a little bit, you'll begin to see that that small world is where most people live, move, and have their being. And there's very few people that look outside that circle. They look outside the circle of the, the body's habits and begin to question a little bit their own existence. My life only has significance in proportion to the love that I will allow into my life. My life only has meaning in proportion to the love I will allow inside my life. Love is a kind of a curious and dangerous thing because the minute you start letting the energy of love into your life, you're gonna start destroying those habits, the important habits that your mind thinks of as essential, like hate, anger, fear, belief. I was watching a minister the other day on TV. I always love watching evangelism. It's kind of my whole form of entertainment. And they were talking about this minister who became a minister because this other minister, as he said, and I quote, scared him to death. Well, what good is that? What's the point of that? And where's the meaning and significance of being afraid when life is about love? So if I'm going to enter into a spiritual practice, I have to be willing to sacrifice and surrender a lot of things that I believe in, the way I live, the way I love, the way I give, what I think, for the sake of love itself. 
Love does not happen because I believe in love or I want it to be. Love is not a passion. Love is something that lives inside of me as a reality. My life and the meaning of it is in proportion to the love that I'm willing of. How willing are you to let go of your ideas of what is right and wrong, good and bad? How willing are you to let go of your selfishness and your pride, your actual hatred to let love happen? Most people think they just fall in love or that they just love. That they know how to love. That's not true. Our hate is very subtle. Most of us live in a subtle hatred, not love. And that hatred is based on my desire to believe that whatever it is I believe in or whatever it is I am is not ugly, that it is absolutely perfect. I have to be willing to let go of the love that I think I feel for the love that is real transformation is for me to reduce myself deeply, 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 slowly in meditation, reducing myself down to the very essence, the core of myself, so I can relate to something so beautiful, something this beautiful. But I can't really appreciate that beauty and that love until I am so simple on the inside that there's barely a whisper of whatever thought is going through my mind, even about what I think is beautiful. Simplicity is the key to the meaning of a person's life. The more simple I am, the less Gregory is involved, the less I and me and my is involved in my life, the more love will be there. Then I don't have the opinions that I love to boast about or the ideas I love to share with people or I don't need a lot of words to make myself feel important. Now importance is of no importance to us. Now the only thing that's left is how willing am I to sit in my heart and in my soul, in my silence, to feel the love of my life, to let love live me. That's the true meaning of simplicity. Will I let love live me? So what does it mean that my life is in proportion to the love that I'm willing to feel? I, I would say 99 and 9 tenths of the people I've met in my life and probably viewing me right now think they know what love is. I bet you all of you out there go, oh, I know what love is and what I'm willing to feel. No, 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 no. I'm not talking about that love. Have you ever noticed how your love can turn to jealousy or pride or anger or fear? Buddha said, hate never yet dispelled hate. Only love dispels hate. What is the meaning of a person's life in proportion to the love they're willing to feel? I have to become so simple on the inside that I'm willing no longer to define love based on the premise of my ego, its gratification, the fulfillment of its needs, or me getting whatever it is that I think makes me important. People are always looking to be important because they know inside themselves that where they're operating from isn't important. This is another one of those foolish things that we love to do. To think that our love is based on the idea that the more loving we are by granting someone our favor, that the more powerful we become. That's not it at all. Love your enemy as yourself, Jesus said. Can you really do that? Can you look at your enemy and love them? I, was, I went to the Phantom of the Opera recently, and I saw something quite fascinating there that I was sharing with my students. I've seen the Phantom of the Opera many times. But when Christina kisses the phantom at the end, when he removes that mask and you see that ugly, ugly face, and she walks over to him and she holds him and kisses him, she immediately sets him free. I sat in the audience and just tears rolled down my eyes. He was free for the first time in his life because she was willing to kiss her phantom. Are you willing to kiss yours? Are you willing to love those who have hurt you, despitefully used you? Are you willing to see the bigger picture of your life and realize it's all about love? And would your ego be willing to die for the sake of a love that was greater than its own self? The causes that we live for are only our own survival. But when you live in love, you're willing to sacrifice your own survival 
for the sake of a love that is greater than anything in this world that you've ever wanted. That's what Jesus, Buddha, Lao Tzu are talking about when they give us the idea of what real love is. It's quite moving. It's quite stirring if you feel it. Simplicity. It's the key to my life. It's my willingness to understand my life in proportion to the love that I'm going to feel. And it's the only thing that makes my life meaningful and valuable at all. So what am I willing to sacrifice to make love possible in my life? What am I willing to allow to, so to speak, fall away from my life so I can have love in my life? These are very important questions. I'd like to share with you some of the things I've found in counseling as I've done it over the years and in my workshops that will help you kind of understand what really needs to happen and what needs to be sacrificed if I'm going to have love in my life. And remember, the love I'm willing of is in proportion to the meaning and the significance of my life. My life has no significance because I have a large bank account or I have a beautiful home or I have a lovely person in my life or I don't have a lovely person in my life or I have children or any object or thing. It doesn't matter. The worldly things don't matter. I hear a lot of people tell me that if you have worldly things that you'll be feeling better about yourself, that more people will like you, you will love yourself, that accomplishment means that you've overcome yourself. That's all garbage. I've even heard of one author that says that if you look younger, feel younger, think younger, have more money, you're a wonderful person and have achieved some kind of spirituality. More garbage. Here's the truth, the thing that most people won't tell you. The whole idea of life is based on the willingness to love at all costs to the things that I want. That means my desire and pride have to go. Ambition, pride, and desire, boy, are they painful experiences in spirituality. And they have to be released. I'm never going to grow and mature within myself as long as I live under the auspice of my desire, my ambition, and my pride for what it is that I think I have in the world. The world proves nothing about what life is, about what love is. Don't try to live your life to try to prove yourself through your ambitions. Live your life to humble yourself, to get so meek and humble inside of yourself that you are willing to forsake the hatred in you that is churned around through ambition and pride and even accomplishment. I know a lot of people who've accomplished a great deal in their life, but have gained nothing as far as living is concerned. I want to introduce to you in this particular segment one of the most unusual meditations of all. It's called Energy Darshan. Every summer we have a huge meditation set uh, up here in Monterey and it's really a wonderful time where we do Vipassana meditation. We take a little walk in the graveyard. We really have a very sobering experience. Walking meditation, eating meditation. But one of the most beautiful experiences is in the evening when we have what we call an Energy Darshan. What is an energy darshan? Well, it is a place where, well, first of all, let me give you the word darshan. It means a meeting, a gathering, where something unique is happening. And what we are doing is using the energy that we have worked on all day to meet each other, to mingle with each other, and it creates such a blissfulness. There are certain things inside of all of us that are not healed unless we are touched by bliss. Prayer is bliss. Happiness, beauty is bliss. My students and I really look forward to Energy Darshan time because it is the rarest time of the year when we've worked all year long through two Asilomar retreats to come to this pinnacle of the silence by the sea where we can play in our Energy Darshan and really enjoy ourselves. It is beyond the mind. 
What happens is, and I'm going to show you just a little bit of how it works here. We're just going to roll up the energy up to the heart and then up to the throat and then up to the head and let it explode a little bit, just, just a little. It's so simple, it's so easy that if you have done, let's say, energy momentum one or heavy breathers and you've kind of let go of your hurt, your pain, your sorrow, and there's kind of a, an energy in you of, well, not knowing, it's a neutral energy. If you start breathing this way through your root chakra, which is your life chakra, up through your heart in little small circles, up through your throat, up through your third eye, and let go out your crown chakra, you're going to find with a little practice that there is an energy there. I don't exactly know what that energy is. I can't tell you, it can't be measured, it can't be explained. All I know is the energy exists, and the more you live in that energy, and the quality of it, and the beauty of it, the more you will recognize the infinite in you and in other people. You will start to recognize the beauty in any given situation. So what I'm gonna do with Bodhi and Sangeet here, who have done energy darshan since I started them, way, way back when, is I'm gonna have them breathe little small circles, little round circles. They just breathe in and out, very small. See how their tummies move in and out? In this little exercise, what we want is little Buddha bellies, as we like to call them, where they're very, very round, tight breaths. I want you to bring it up now to your Harry. Now they brought the energy up a little bit further here to the Harry. Now up to the solar plexus, please. We store a lot of pain and suffering. This is where we think our hearts are broken. See how their breath has changed a little bit? It naturally will. Now I'm gonna ask them to go into the heart chakra, right here into the heart. Breathing, little round circles. Now to the throat chakra. To the third eye. Now I want you to release out your crown chakra. Big breath out. Now right now, believe it or not, they're experiencing something called blissfulness. It's not lightheadedness from breathing. It is their energy. And they're in this very interesting state where everything is beautiful again. Now the object of a spiritual practice is to learn how to get there, be refreshed and nourished by it, and they sit quietly with it and let it work them. They let the energy work them. But what you must understand is this isn't about getting high. This is about going within and feeling your natural energy. It's about feeling who and what you really are and it's allowing you to have the direct experience of love and life rather than the artificial one, which was what most people want to have. It takes a little practice. It isn't going to happen your first or second time, but I would highly suggest you do a catharsis before you do any energy darshan just to let go of your hurt, your pain, and your sorrow. I want to thank Bodhi and Sangeet for this. We'll be right back. We're going to take a little break, and I'll wrap up this program. Thanks for being with us. So what is the point of it all? Well, if you begin to look at it, a meaningful life has nothing to do with what other people think of us, what we get in this life, what we don't get in this life, how luxurious our life is or how simple our life is. It's really a matter of me beginning to go inside myself and find what it means to find the pure in heart through meekness and humility. The more humble I am about myself in this life, the more willing I am to be simple about myself in this life, the more poor in spirit I am in this life, the more I'm going to find the meaning of it. A lot of people work very hard to achieve greatness in this world, and it eludes them because no matter how famous you become, it doesn't mean you've achieved greatness. True greatness is something that a person finds within themselves that the world never understands, never sees, never hears about. It's about a certain place that lives inside of you where meaning and significance is not relegated to dollars and cents or people's opinions, 
but rather in the simplicity of a person's heart to perceive and feel, understand, and live in this life. You were given the very gift of this thing called living and life. Most of us squander it because we're too busy trying to make it more than what it seems to be. The beauty of this life is in our hearts. If I live it from the heart and the soul and the essence of my being, I'm going to find something very unique happening. The significance of my life is in every single moment of my livingness. And that is what's the most beautiful aspect of life, where every moment is blessing me, bringing me closer and closer and closer to the love of my life. I want to thank you for watching this particular edition of Aspire. I hope you'll forgive me, won't you? Namaste. We have a pattern of living. What are we doing? I'm writing her a love note. Oh, okay, let's do it again. Cut it out. <laughs> <laughs> if we had a decent budget, we'd have somebody here helping me, leading me along. But no, I don't get that. <laughs> I get a lot of finger pointing going, go here, go there, while I'm trying to talk. Greg puts his foot in his mouth. You know what? You're fired. Back to Aspire. <laughs> <laughs> I am the ghost of Aspire. <laughs> Hi. He's willfully ashamed. All in all, he's a loser. Just come walking down now like a regular guy. <laughs>